Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so uh, let us let us uh, rejoin uh, of our our discussion of national income accounting and how we have to be careful okay when we are doing that national income accounting of an economy okay so we have defined what is gdp and uh, every word when we are defining that gdp how every word has an important right so we have discussed value let's say suppose say i am i am producing some uh, say in my in my I have a stitching machine or stitching factory, right? Stitching workshop. Okay. So, what I am doing? I am purchasing cloth from the market and using those cloth, I am I am uh, transforming those clothes into different specific uh, pieces to produce say shirts, maybe kurtas and all, right? But uh, to run my stitching machine, right, I am hiring some or I am I am utilizing some uh, powers. Okay, or I am and and uh, beyond that powers. No, I am I am hiring certain uh, expert uh, workers who know how to run or who know how to make garments using clothes, right? So I have to pay them, right? So whatever money I am paying to those laborers whom I am hiring, whatever amount of money I am spending to purchase electricity, I am hiring this room from the owner of this room. Right, where I am establishing my stitching machines, right? So I have to pay some rent to that that owner of this room, right? So combination of all these factors, whatever total my payment or total my expenditure for each and the uh, each and every of these inputs uh, which we are I am using in my uh, cloth productions, uh, not cloth production, rather garments production, right, through this stitching factory, right? So those are basically the combined valuation over the cloth. So, cloth say suppose uh, what the cloth I am purchasing from the market that is say suppose 2000 rupees of cloth market valuation of that cloth is 2000 rupees. Okay? And after using that cloth after producing these garments when I am selling those garments in the market suppose 5000 rupees of garments. Okay? So, definitely 3000 rupees I am generating additional valuation this 5000 rupees minus 2000 rupees. 3000 rupees this 3000 rupees how how it is coming into the picture because that 3000 rupees is a combined combination of laborers what i am hiring electricity what i am purchasing rent whatever i am giving to this owner of this room and perhaps whatever the profit i am i am keeping for my entrepreneur skill right so their combined uh, combined valuation will be that 3000 rupees Okay. So, now you are getting a sense that if we have to calculate the income or GDP of an entire economy of an entire economy right. So, we have to aggregate in this way for all kinds of goods and services whatever is produced within that economy right. You can remember in very beginning maybe second lecture or third lecture we introduced circular flow diagram right. Let me remind you what was there in that circular flow diagram. This kind of one, one, one box was there, okay. One side was households, households, okay. Another side was farm, okay. And if you can remember, households were purchasing, so goods and services are coming from farms to households. And house in alternatively, in other words, we can tell households are purchasing goods and services from, from the producer of those goods and services. And that they are purchasing from where? There is a market here that is called market for goods and services, goods and services. How firms are producing those? Farms are hiring factors of production from households because farms are hiring so many factors of production, and all those factors of production are basically owned by some or other household members. Okay, so owners of factors of production are household basically. Okay, so farms are hiring factors of production from households. Okay, so that factors of production there is another market here that is called markets for. 
for factors of production, factors of production. Okay. And as a result, so this arrow by arrow, we are representing the flow of goods and services, how it is going from one side to another or one production unit to consumption unit. This is consumption unit and this is production unit we told that time, right. And exactly the opposite way money will flow, okay. Money will flow in this way, okay. So, red color, red color thing is basically flow of money and black color arrow thing are basically flow of goods and services. Okay. So, households are purchasing uh, goods and services from firm. So, to purchase those household has to pay to the firm. So, that is why money is going that way as payment. Exactly that way firms are hiring factors of production from household. So, they have to pay the, those factors of production and their respective remuneration, labors to wage then uh, rent to the land okay, capital uh, to capital it has to pay interest and the whoever the enterprise uh, entrepreneur they are getting their profit right. So, income is generating in that way or monetary income mon monetary flows is following uh, through red color this loop or red color yellows right. So, definitely if whatever different types of productions are happening within an economy right. So, different types of goods are there, different types. So, within food, say one, one broad category of good is food. Even within food, you know, certain fruits are there, certain vegetables are there, certain cereals are there, food, right. So, so many different types of foods are there, cloths, so many different types of cloths are there, and so on, right. So, each and every of those productions, if we can think of this kind of overall loop kind of thing, one side of that production activity, some farm is there or some farms are there, another side some households are there. And if we can capture those things, the entire economy also we can capture through this, this diagram, circular flow diagram. It is an economy wide activity how it is going on. Okay? And in that way, if we can club all the goods and services production whatever firms are involved into that goods and services production, all those firms are here. Whatever households are there, which are involved into consumption of those goods and services and selling of those factors of production, which these firms are hiring from, right, all those households are captured within this box. So, that means, if we can do that, this entire diagram is basically a mini representation of the entire economy wide production activities, whatever happening within that particular economy, say maybe in, in India. Okay. So, if how, somehow we can club the total market valuation which is transacted through this market, market for goods and services, we can get, we can land GDP. Since that GDP we are landing by summing over all the market values of goods and services produced and transacted within that particular economy through product market for goods and services, that GDP is called GDP at market prices. Okay. Same GDP, but we are reaching that GDP through market prices. So, that is why it is called GDP at market prices. Exactly that way, if we so that GDP and market prices we are we are landing, if we can capture only this loop, loop for goods and services, only how much total goods and services are transacted within that economy, okay. Overall total, those goods and services as market value, okay. That is called GDP at market price. Alternatively, if we can club only this lower panel, there is another market here, okay, factors of production market, right. So, if we can capture the value, all the market value of all the which is transacted within this market, okay, we can also land GDP, same GDP, 
Okay. So, that GDP this GDP whatever we can reach that GDP is called GDP at factor cost. So, terminology what we are bringing into the picture GDP at market prices why it is called GDP at market prices this terminology is called GDP at factor cost why it is called GDP at factor cost you can easily you can easily understand you need not memorize anything. So, GDP at factor cost where factors of production market is involved GDP at market prices where markets for goods and services are involved. Okay. And ideally there is no reason that this GDP and this GDP are different, they should be identical, they should be same. Okay. But in real life in any economy if you calculate these two either through this loop or through this loop you will usually land two different GDP figures which ideally should not be there. So, those two difference two different or difference between these two figures what we can observe in real life if we observe that this value and this value is exactly same fine well and good. If there is some difference right that is because of perhaps so many things are involved no so many different types of markets are involved right. So, perhaps we made some mistake while we are combining them. Okay. So, that kind of some mistakes can be there here and there somewhere. So, that is why some difference in these two GDP figures are coming into the picture and that difference is sometimes called statistical discrepancy, statistical discrepancy, passage statistical discrepancies whatever difference is coming it is a discrepancy it is some statistics lot of statistics are involved you are summing 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 combining them no. So, in that process perhaps some discrepancy arises otherwise ideally so, so the point is if you want to reach the GDP you have to either concentrate one of the loops either upper loop or either the con concentrate only market for goods and services or concentrate market for factors of production. So, not both of them you can easily understand that whatever households whatever they are earning from farms by selling their factors of production to the farms right that earnings that money only they are spending here to purchase goods and services from the farm right. So, that is why we are trying to reach total amount of income through either this loop or that loop any of them you can right and accordingly two different terminology will come into the picture GDP at market prices or GDP at factor cost ok that is the thing. Now, the question is this GDP say suppose in India no every country uh, there is some authority or there is some uh, body official body official organization who are responsible to release this kind of GDP data in India. Uh, so, uh, there is a ministry central government gov our uh, Delhi government central government ok uh, not Delhi the Delhi state government ok central government Indian central government union government ok it has a ministry called MOSPI in short I think uh, some of you may already heard if you do not you just ministry of statistics and program implementation must be ok. So, you can search in Google and you if you search in Google must be you know they have a website you can enter into their website you will see that under this must be you know certain important uh, national statistical bodies are there ok. Say CSO one body is called CSO central statistical organization earlier now it is called central statistical office. Okay. Earlier it was called Central Statistical Organization. Another is NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization, okay. NSSO. Like this kinds of certain statistical bodies are there which are responsible to collect and release the statistics related to certain specific activities. Okay. So, CSO is responsible to release this kind of macroeconomic data. Okay, say GDP Indian GDP what was in 1951 in 1952 every year right if you look at into or if you log in into not log in just um, just uh, visit this must be website and through must be website CSO website you will see there is a big table different years what is India GDP that is there. Okay. So, when we are seeing or you are seeing that GDP data right two concepts are coming one is called uh, so, what is the GDP we know? So, GDP 
one is called nominal GDP, another is called vis a vis real GDP. So, let us discuss those two concepts now. What is the difference between them? So, GDP when we told, when we defined, we told that it is the market value of whatever goods and services are produced within that country, right. So, definitely this year's whatever GDP when we are calculating this year, whatever amount of apple, whatever amount of orange, whatever amount of cloth, whatever amount of milk, all this whatever amount of say hair cut, so all kinds of goods and services whatever produced within that economy, we are summing their market value, right. But when we are, we are getting each of those uh, productions market value, okay, at what market prices we are evaluating? Definitely, whatever price of that respective commodity is prevailing in the market of that particular year, right? Say apple, apple price, suppose today this price is say 150 rupees per kg. There is no guarantee that last year also price was this, per year, last year it was 145 rupees per kg. Usually, price has a tendency to uh, increase over time, no? Usually, so that way I am telling. Sometimes price can fall also, okay? So, that is the thing, right? So, when we are getting GDP of a particular year, okay, we are uh, evaluating the market valuation of all the goods and services whatever produced within that country at the price level of that particular year in the market, right. So, that is why in that way when we are summing up, we are lending to the GDP that is called nominal GDP. Nominal GDP means GDP calculated at the price level, market price level of that particular year, the particular year wh which year's GDP we are talking about or which quarter's GDP we are talking about, we consider the market price of that particular quarter and so on, okay. Then what is real GDP? Real GDP is basically when we are combining this GDP or we are lending this GDP using some fixed price. Why that is important? Look, so, suppose say 2020-2021, this year's GDP is say Indian GDP, suppose say I am just uh, as an example say 500 crore rupees, suppose okay, just an example that is not the actual figure, huh? Indian GDP is much more larger than 500 crore, okay. So, anyway, so suppose this is the uh, Indian GDP that much of rupees and suppose 2019-20 that financial year it was say rupees 450 crore suppose. So, although this valuation looks like a little bit more, so we can get an impression that perhaps India what GDP is capturing overall amount of production activity what is happening within that economy right all goods and services whatever is produced, right. So, definitely this 450 vis a vis 500, we are getting an impression that perhaps that economic production activity in India has improved from 2019-20 financial year to 2021 financial year. But the way it is shown, no, that may not be the case. It may not be improved at all. It may fall also. Why? Because when we are evaluated this, this year's GDP, because this is nominal GDP, evaluated at the market price of that particular year. Since price level has a tendency to increase over time, perhaps all different goods and services, overall price level perhaps little bit increased. So, the kind of as if the GDP has expanded by rupees 50 crore, that may not be the case actually. In fact, perhaps GDP has increased, but it may not be the 50 crore amount of rupees, rather maybe 30 crore the amount of rupees, okay. So, in a sense or alternatively we can tell the kind of GDP figure, this is also this GDP, this GDP, these are nominal GDPs. So, the nominal GDPs are not comparable over time. So, just looking at that this is 500 more than 450 what was in the last year that does not mean that your GDP has actually increased or improved overall uh, economic activity level has improved that does not mean because that increment has two components. It is basically what is the increment in price into whatever the increment in the quantity of the total goods and services whatever is produced. 
So, we can tell if yes actual quantity of goods and services on an on a totality has improved, then we can definitely tell that it is improved. How we can do that? That is why concept of real GDP is there. Okay. How we can calculate? Well, so whatever goods and services is produced today and whatever say today's goods and services basket is this. Okay. So, I am telling this is 2021. And last year's basket is this, say 20, this. Okay. So, this basket, certain amounts of certain quintals of apple is there, certain amounts of wheat is there, certain amounts of certain uh, thousand meters of cloth is there, certain thousand liters of milk is there, and so on, right? Different commodities with different respective units. All those are within this basket. And similarly, other year, earlier year, whatever was those produ production, all those are within this basket. Now, suppose I am evaluating this entire basket, whatever its market valuation at considering the market price of this year of all those products. Whatever valuation I am reaching, that is definitely this thing, because 450 rupees crore of rupees, 450 crore of rupees, whatever I am reading of this particular year, that is the nominal value, nominal GDP. That means, that basket of production of goods and services of that year is evaluated at that particular year's market prices. Now, if I evaluate the production basket of this year at this particular year's price level, okay, perhaps I will see that this will we will get say rupees uh, 479 crore you are reaching and this was rupees 450. So, then this GDP and this GDP are called also this is nominal as well as real because the same that year's price this year's price also uh, this year's uh, basket also we are evaluating using that year's price. So, I can compare that this rupees for 50 crore, vis a vis crore of course, crore is there, vis a vis this rupees for 79 crore, these two figures are comparable, because whatever amount of rupees you are lending, those are by after the evaluation of actual production of goods and services at the same price level, this year's price level. So, this is called say GDP real GDP taking the at the price of at the price of the year 2019-20. Okay. So, that will be one year 2019-20, 2020-21, 2021-22, 2022-23. Okay. Here, this value will be rupees 450 crore, here this will be rupees 479 crore and so on. So, this series is called real GDP in the sense that GDP figure whatever are reported against different years, those figures are at some constant price level. What is that constant price level? This year's price level all these figures are reached after evaluating the actual quantity production basket evaluated at this year's price level. Okay. So, that is why it is called constant. So, when we will reach some real GDP figure, obvious question will come, you are, you are reaching that real GDP figure at which price level? That year's price level, that year is called or whatever the time point at which or at which price you are you have evaluated all that different years GDP to reach the real GDP that time point is called base period, base period. So, whenever you will have a real GDP series right, it is always referred to or there is a background base period. Okay. If that period is one year, it, it is called sometimes base year also. If it is this GDP is calculated for different quarter, it can be base quarter and so on. So, in general we can tell it as base period. Exactly same thing you can do, right? This is the real production of goods and services that basket. You can evaluate 
that basket at the this year's price also. So, whatever price level of different goods and services, whatever is produced today, whatever their respective prices in today's market, I am evaluating at that price to reach the overall GDP figure. So, for 2020 21, I will get 500 crore because this was the nominal GDP at this year's 2020 21 price level. Taking this year's price level, if we evaluate last year's consumption uh, quantity production basket, right? we will also reach that will also give a real GDP, but in that case we will get another series of real GDP, but that case base year is 2021, this was the base. So, usually this, this which is the period which price level you are considering to evaluate all different years or different periods GDP, that period is called base period and as a result you will get a series of real GDP. Why we are doing this real GDP? Because this real GDP figures are true sense comparable. The value amount of monetary units what you are reaching that actually reflect that yes, yes the amount of production activities or economic activities within your country has expanded. In this particular case it is telling that yes, yes it is in fact expanded because last year real GDP was 450 rupi, uh, crore rupees, this year real GDP is 479 crore rupees. So, little bit increased right 29 crore rupees uh, of GDP has increased. So, that is the reflection of because whatever Incre increment is increment in price co contribution may be there which was there in this 500 crore rupees that increment in or uh, due to or effect of increase in price level that we have diluted now we have removed that we have evaluated in the same year's price level that is why this is the real change and this this real gdp series is a good indicator to to get uh, get an overall economic activity level within an economy, within a society, within an entire economy, country for a particular time, time span, maybe year or maybe um, quarter and so on, right. So, the, the first question, another question can come to your mind. So, uh, we are telling MOSP, we are telling CSO, CSO is the uh, responsible agency in India to release this kind of data, no, if you visit their website, right you can simply google no and you can you can see their website and you can visit you will see that side by side two gdp figures are there this is the real gdp series this is the nominal gdp series so when nominal gdp series you can understand that every year's gdp is reached uh, evaluating that year's uh, production basket at the price level of that year's market uh, market price level itself right when no, GDP, real gdp you are reaching side by side real GDP figures are there, it is always written that that real GDP figures you are attaining or they are attaining, they are reaching taking which as the best period. Okay. So, they are telling that suppose say 1998-99 is the best period. That means, all different years GDP real GDP figure what they are reaching evaluating those respective years production basket at the market price of this particular year. Okay, so, definitely they are comparable because effect of increment or change in price, price sometimes can go down also, effect of change in price is, is removed from that effect and after that GDP figure you are reaching, right. So, that is why, so real GDP are actually comparable over time, okay. And since nominal GDPs are not exactly comparable because it involves the change in price effect whatever can be there right. So, that is why we are looking for real GDP and in that way if we take say suppose nominal GDP series and real GDP series both are given to you. So, today say suppose 2021 this year 2021 say suppose nominal GDP is say nominal GDP, nominal GDP and real GDP. Okay. Nominal GDP is suppose say uh, rupees say 500 crore, but real GDP is say suppose rupees 479 crore, suppose, suppose Indian actual GDP is much more larger than this, right. So, if I take nominal GDP, nominal GDP by real GDP 
of the same year, this particular year only means in this particular case is basically 500 by 479. Okay. This is called very important concept GDP deflator. So, GDP deflator is you can easily understand that it captures overall price level of this particular year vis a vis what was the price level in the base period. Because this real GDP you are you are reaching considering some base period and since nominal GDP and real GDP there is some difference in these two figures you can definitely you can realize or you can understand if you think a bit since one particular year's nominal GDP and real GDP are two different figures that means to land this real GDP whatever is considered as the base period that is definitely not this year some other year that is for sure right. Otherwise, if today's this year's price level is the best period, right? Its nominal GDP and real GDP will be the same, okay? But because that year's price level at the that year's price level, you are evaluating the entire production basket, right? So that's the thing. The, so this GDP depletor usually GDP depletor when we are calculating or we are we are representing, we usually we, we we represent that in percentage form. So this nominal GDP by real GDP into hundred that is called GDP depletor. So, so GDP depletor series if you see GDP depletor series okay, different year say uh, 2010, 11, 2011, 12 in that way you will go right say suppose here it is 95, here it is say 99, say 2012, 13 this is 100 then 2013, 14 say so, suppose 111 in that way suppose things are there. So, these figures real GDP depletor series if you see in this way no, wherever is the 100 okay, that is the best period to reach the real GDP all, all these years okay, and all these different years are. So, that is the best period in the which sense look at here if this particular years price level is 100 what is this particular years price level perhaps 99, so little bit less. This price level is not a single commodity price level, overall commodities whatever say good food uh, means bread, cloth, uh, milk, uh, maybe haircut, some other service, domestic health service, so many things goods and services are produced right. If you consider a general price level for all those goods and services that is reflected by this 100, this year's overall price level is 100. Comparing to that, this year's price level has increased 11 percent from this year, and so on. Okay, so GDP depletor is basically some sort of price index which captures what is the overall price level of the entire goods and services whatever produced for this country. Okay, overall price level, okay. not a single commodity or single service price level that we are referring, right? Now, let me tell one small thing why we are bothering to calculate this GDP. Can we think of it is a good indicator of uh, a country's overall prosperity or something like that? Yes, in fact, not this GDP rather per capita real GDP. Okay. Per capita means per head. In India, say so many this, 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 this that much crore of rupees, that much crore of different year real GDP figure you will get. And each of those respective years, what is the total number of population in India you want to? So, per, per person, total GDP, real GDP by number of population, if you take, you will get that is called per person GDP is called sometimes per capita. Per capita means per head. Per head, what is the real GDP? So, that per head real GDP is a good indicator of how much, what is the overall prosperity level of a country. In your book, there is a nice table you will see that why you are United States of America, United Kingdom, these western countries are there, some eastern countries are there, some middle east countries are there, some African countries are there. Everywhere per capita real GDP, what is the situation of these countries? You will realize that this USA, Japan, UK, their per capita real GDP is very high compared to the Asian countries or developing countries, it is little bit less or way less some randomly chosen certain African countries is way below 
Okay. So, those are reflecting that what is the standard of living. You can remember that in the very first 10 principles when we, we have discussed one principle was there a country's overall standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. And since goods and services whatever a country is producing that is captured by GDP, right. So, that is why we are telling it is a good indicator of uh, prosperity of a country or what is the standard of living of a country or uh, a, a, a representative individual is enjoying what kind of standard of living that is reflected by per capita real GDP of that country. Okay. So, that is the thing yes uh, some debate was there why we should bother because when you are calculating GDP no that will not capture the what is the health indicator or wh what is the status of health of that particular country or that country's children what kind of level of education they are getting right that is not captured there. But if you have more GDP right you have flexibility or you have scope to spend more on your health care invest more on your education of your children and all right. So, although GDP directly do not capture does not capture that uh, health expenditure or status of uh, healthy life you uh, uh, representative person or representative uh, people are uh, or one representative uh, individual of that country is enjoying what kind of educational attainment they are getting right. Although it directly does not capture that, but if you have more GDP you, you, you have the opportunity to spend more towards these things also to improve your thing. Uh, your, your overall standard of living as well or these kinds of qualitative things or as well to improve those things right. So, so we can consider per capita real GDP to be of different countries to be a very good indicator of overall prosperity level of that country. Okay. And what is the overall inflation definitely some price index what we are, we are having it is growth rate on price index next class we will introduce consumer price index. So, if we calculate the growth rate of that price index we will get the overall inflation that we will discuss later. Let us let us stop here. Okay. So, with this we have discussed uh, GDP calculation okay, or national income accounting related all the concepts if one or two I overlooked or I missed I will I will come back to in the next next lecture. Okay. Let us stop here.